It's time for another construction update. You heard that right. Today, let's go around the parks to see what's new about the construction of the Walt Disney Studios expansion, the park's changes that are underway, the new Rosalie restaurant and real start of Disney Village 2.0, and even explore new projects that have been announced to make rainy days less uncomfortable, as Disney has plans to weatherproof some locations. So, let's get to it! Before we begin, if you enjoy my content, consider subscribing as I upload weekly videos on theme parks from the past to the future. You can also find me on Twitter, Instagram, Blue Sky and in our Discord community with Disney and theme park fans. Links are in the description. So let's start with Brasserie Rosalie, the brand new restaurant in Disney Village that replaced Cafe Mickey and is opening this Friday, December 8th. That's right, the real first addition to the new village will be opening in a matter of days, and Disney was kind enough to share a view at the inside of this restaurant. As you can tell, it will be a more expensive dining experience with some good decoration, including this awesome moving light fixture that will totally work for a long time. But in all seriousness, this looks like an amazing start for the Disney Village 2.0 and will most likely offer amazing food options. If you're in a hurry and can't really sit down for a meal, well, you can always pass by the takeout window that should be open 24-7 according to the inscriptions in the concept art. Disney won't be the one to make food for this restaurant, as it will be handled by Group Bertrand, a French hotel and restaurant group with over a thousand venues. With the opening of this restaurant, we'll also get a first look at the new floorings that will be found all throughout the new village replacing the tired and ugly old concrete floors. Can't wait to learn more about this restaurant and keep on seeing the shopping and dining district of Disneyland Paris evolve. With that out of the way, let's quickly pass on by the Disneyland Hotel. The Imagineers are currently adding the finishing touches as the opening date comes closer with each passing day. With the hotel opening in just over a month on January 25th, we can really start to see the end of the works, especially at night, with all the rooms and restaurants having the lights on. This way, some of the inside decoration can be spotted from the entrance of the Disneyland Park. The popcorn lights that can be found all throughout the facades have also started to be turned on, which is something that has been missing from the Main Street skyline since day one of the construction. I really can't wait to see how the hotel looks like when the works end in late January and I'm very excited to wander in and explore everything I can. We don't have to wait much longer. Since we're already inside the Disneyland Park, let's move on and explore the new weatherproofing projects that Disney has officially announced. As you probably know, it rains quite a bit in Paris and because of this, the park was designed with that in mind, but after all this time, they have decided that more is needed and so, the first of these projects have been unveiled, starting with Casey's Corner. The famous hot dog restaurant currently has these huge umbrellas that in the summer protect from the sun and in the winter from the rain. These will soon be taken out because a more temporary structure will be built to provide more comfort for the guests and be more on theme. So, it's a win-win. This Victorian-themed covered terrace will blend in quite nicely with the surrounding architecture and Imagineers have said that it won't hide the Main Street facades, so they remain visible while also giving some personality to the new structure. I think that it looks great and will be an amazing change to happen here. It also reminds me of Disneyland and the Magic Kingdom for some reason. Not far from Casey's lies a very common character meet and greet location that unfortunately also has to have umbrellas because of all the rain. Well, not anymore, as this location will receive an elegant and refined kiosk, ideal for spending a special moment in company of your favorite Disney characters. The permit has actually been filed, and we can have a closer look at it. And by doing so, it's possible to note that the entire location will be different, and include a small queue so that guests don't overflow to the street. While these are obviously smaller projects, it's very important to continually invest in the parks and both of them will definitely contribute to a better experience for the guests. Disney has also shared 
that this is just the beginning as Peter Pan will be next in the pipeline and it's not hard to see why. It clearly needs to have some changes as the queues are constantly one of the longest in the park and overflows to the walkable areas of Fantasyland, creating a bottleneck. We don't know how they will tackle this one yet, but it's not the only attraction that's receiving a queue update. For this one we need to switch parks and get in line to enter the Twilight Zone. The Tower of Terror will be getting a similar treatment to that of Casey's, as the non-sheltered part of the queue will be receiving a very well-themed canopy. Similar to the smaller one that's already there, this one will extend to most of the outside queue where the majority of the switchbacks are located. This will definitely make the queuing experience much better for several reasons, but not having to queue in the hot sun or the cold rain will be very welcomed by everyone. It's clear that Disney listened to guests as all these will truly make a difference in their stay. You know what else will make a huge difference? The Walt Disney Studios 2.0 expansion. So let's finally get to it. Starting with the construction going on inside the park itself. As we reported earlier this year, the entire production courtyard will be completely unrecognizable when the transformation is completed, and now it has begun. Currently, crews are leveling everything, taking out planters, trees, decorations, and even the Walt Partner statue that served as the park's welcome sign. At the time of this video, the entrance area was completely leveled, with concrete filling in the gaps and construction walls in front of both main theaters. The front and entrance of Studio Theater was the first to have a small part of the transformation unveiled, with new floorings being shown. From now on, the Walt Disney Studios Park won't get rid of construction walls for more than a year, and the next big milestone will be the closure of Studio One for its grand makeover. I've shared these renderings by outside ears several times now, but they really are the best way to get an understanding of how the theater district will look like in 2025. Moving on to the expansion side of the Walt Disney Studios project, we can ride the parachutes and get a great view of the progress that crews have been making in the past month. Now, more than ever, we see that Arendelle facades are really starting to appear, with lots of theming already being installed. The main theming work is being done on the facades closer to the castle, with the entrance to the meet and greet location being very advanced already. On top of it, we see that the major show building that will house the e-ticket attraction Frozen Ever After is starting to be enclosed. When completed, this will allow Imagineers and the works to really start moving forward in the inside of the attraction, with all the theming, construction, animatronics and everything necessary to make it work. The Arendelle Castle is also receiving theming, with the turrets and walls completely themed with bricks. Works on the next parts of the castle should begin soon. One other big change is the mountain. That strange metallic structure we see is in fact the start of the mountain's construction. They're using a similar technique to that of the Big Thunder Mountain and mostly every big rock themed structure in the Disney parks. Moving forward, we see that the lake already has a lot of rock work that will make it a lot more natural and not just a man-made lake, including some rock work already painted with green and grey colors to give them a more fantastical feel. All the winding paths we see in front of Frozen will be a part of the Frozen Gardens, one of the many gardens to be featured around this new expansion. These will not only give an amazing look into Arendelle, but also the lake and its shows. Talking about the lake, it looks like they are cleaning the surface and taking everything from it in order to soon start adding the water, marking a huge milestone in this whole project. Closer to us, we have the Lakeside Table Service Restaurant, and it's possible to see that crews are actively pouring the concrete foundations for it. This will soon go vertical and construction advance in a good pace. Similarly to that, we have the Tangled Spinner attraction. Here crews are working the concrete walls around the inside, and when completed, the installation for the attraction itself should start soon after. Disney filed some new permits for small structures that will be found on the right side of the lake, and thanks to outside ears, we can now take a look at them. Similarly themed to the East Pavilion that we've already discussed months ago, there will be a West Pavilion. This new pavilion located between Frozen and Cars Road Trip will only offer food and snacks, unlike the bigger East one that will also have restrooms, show facilities and an ATM. Alongside this new structure will be four other smaller ones. Three of these will be food kiosks, 
serving all kinds of Stacy snacks. As seen here, they will truly be small kiosks. The other structure will be an awning to shelter guests from the elements, such as the not-so-rare Parisian rain. Another of these awnings will be found on the other side of Frozen to provide the same much-needed protection. One thing I don't understand is how there seems to be no shops around the lake. Sure, you'll have several in Frozen, but it's a big missed opportunity to have some in the already bare paths around the lake. Quickly going back to the construction photos, we can see that crews seem to be leveling the third lands area. This is very interesting because as you should know by now, currently there's no announced land for that place. Well, this may be changing sooner rather than later, as an announcement for the rumored Lion King land may be coming. With that, and crews seemingly working on getting that ready, we won't have to wait as long to explore this land as we have with Frozen. Something else to note, it seems the Star Wars land concept art has been removed from the construction walls, which I think will be the closest thing to an official cancellation we will have. Well everyone, that's it for today's video, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing. And now, as always, thank you for watching and that's a wrap.